by the Mark II, two strips of leather passed through our hands. The sea, too, is affected by gravity. It hugs the circumference of the earth, drawn towards the centre. By the Mark III, three strips of leather pass through our hands. It doesn't fall off the earth, splashing away out into the stratosphere. By the Mark V, a piece of white cloth passes through our hands. Flung as spray off the globe by its daily burling around, but stays there, swishing about at the land. By the Mark Seven, a piece of red cloth passes through our hands. The moon pulls at it too. It's not too far away. By the Mark 10, a piece of leather with a hole passes through our hands. The moon's pull is called gravity too, but it isn't strong enough to pull the water right out to it. By the Mark 13, a piece of blue cloth passes through our hands. What it does is pull and tug at the lumps of water on the turning earth, so that first it's going one way, then another, dashing against the land on one side, then on the other. By the Mark 15, a piece of white cloth passes through our hands. Isolated bits of land get in the way, and the sea, in its mad rush to get to the moon, where, of course, it will never get, goes tearing around those islands, first in one direction and then back again. By the Mark 17, a piece of red cloth passes through our hands. It never gets anywhere except to where it came from, but keeps up that regular surge and heave of the tides as it hurls itself forever towards the moon. By the Mark 20, a string with two knots passes through our hands. The ocean that shatters the rocks is having its surface puffed off into clouds, which will be ocean again someday. I drink the ocean and have met the fish, which never reach the surface. <laughs> 